Okay, in this problem, we're asked to, for each critical point, P, uh, use Morse lemma to write F after a change of coordinates in one of the following three forms. So the first form is F of P plus U squared plus V squared. Second form is F of P minus U squared minus V squared. Or as F of P plus U squared minus V squared. And we're given, uh, and we also want to describe what the level curves are like near P. And we're given that f of x, y is equal to the quantity x minus 1 squared plus y plus, the quantity y plus 2 squared plus x minus 3y. So first let's figure out what the critical points are. So So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is 2 times the quantity x minus 1 plus 1. And f sub y is 2 times the quantity y plus 2 minus 3. And we want to find when our gradient vector is equal to 0 or when each of its components, and hence f sub x and f sub y, are equal to 0. And we find that x is equal to 1 half y is negative one half. And we want to now calculate what the Hessian matrix is and the determinant of it at our critical point. So partial derivative of f sub x with respect to x is 2. Partial derivative of f sub x with respect to y is 0. And likewise, partial derivative of f sub y with respect to x is also 0. And then finally, the partial derivative of f sub y with respect to y is 2. So we have our Hessian matrix is given as 2, 0, 0, 2. And we find, want to find the determinant of that. So we'll say D. Our determinant of our Hessian matrix is just 4, uh, 4 minus 0. And we want to now use more lemma. We have non zero determinant, so we know that we have non degenerate critical point at. 1 half, negative 1 half, and Morse lemma tells us that lambda 1 times lambda 2 is equal to 4, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is equal to f sub x x plus f sub y y, which is um, equal to 4. And so we can solve these simultaneously. We see that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 is equal to 2. So we have two positive um, lambdas. And our Hessian matrix is also positive. Or the determinant of our Hessian matrix is also positive. So that tells us that. Um, we are using the first case at our critical point. So we know that we can write f composed of our change of coordinates, v of uv is equal to f at the point 1 half negative 1 half plus u squared plus v squared. So we can calculate f at 1 half negative 1 half and we get we 
we're just plugging in one half negative one half into our function right here, f of x, y, and we get nine halves plus u squared plus v squared. Sorry, this should read f composed of phi rather than f phi phi. I don't know why I wrote that. But f composed of phi phi, or f composed of phi at uv is equal to 9 halves plus u squared plus v squared. So um, it's important to note that Morse lemma just tells us of the existence of this change of coordinates. It not, it's not necessarily going to be easy to calculate what that what that change of coordinates will be, but just for the sake of um, the fact that we can, I'm going to go ahead and calculate that in this case. Um, so, start off with expanding out our f of x, y. So, multiplying out the square, we get So we get x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared plus 4y plus 4 plus x minus 3y. So we can combine the x terms. We get combine the y terms. We get And then combine our constants, we get plus 5. And now we, we can do what we might expect, just complete the square. So So we get the quantity x minus 1 half squared minus 1 fourth plus y plus 1 half quantity squared minus 1 fourth plus 5. We can combine these constant terms. And we see that we get a nice um, function in terms of our f of p, which is 9 halves. And then x minus 1 half will let us u. And for our v, we'll just let that be x y plus 1 half. So we see that if we let that be the case, we have our f composed of phi of uv is 9 halves plus u squared plus v squared. And we have our change of coordinates. And we used Morse lemma to write f in this term, or in this form at p. OK, uh, I forgot to mention that we wanted to also describe the level curves near P. And that's really quick. We see that we've gotten our F composed of phi into this form, which we know is going to have a minimum. So we know that the level curves are going to be circles around P. And the gradient vectors are going to be pointing outwards from P. So any direction that you go, you're going to be increasing, which means that we have a minimum. So we have a minimum around P and circles.